Welcome to Your Family's Health, the program that focuses on health care issues with unique and different modalities for taking charge of your health today. Experts talk weekly with our continuing roster of guests from around the country and right here in Nassau County to keep you up to date on the latest health issues and trends. Take care of your mind, body, and soul. Spend the next half hour with the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC, and get on the journey to better health. Hello and welcome to Your Family's Health. My name is Dr. Janine Cookerard from the nursing department here at Nassau Community College, along with Nassau Community College student Gina Peter. And today we're going to learn about our brains. Our guest today is Jay Mady, the Vice President and Executive Director of the United Brain Association. Jay, welcome to Your Family's Health on the Voice of NASA Community College 90.3 WHPC. Welcome. Well, thank you. Thank you for having us on. I look forward to the interview. So first of all, I hope you're doing well um, in this COVID pandemic. Has the virus affected you personally? No, I've been very lucky. We, uh, we paid close attention in February mm-hmm. and uh, basically isolated ourselves um, and have a very small pod, if you will. Good. Don't get out much. I'm 60. My wife is the same. We have one other friend that we work with closely, and we basically have, uh, and we have dogs. Okay. So uh, we get out a lot. We get a lot of outdoor time in, but we're basically uh, isolated from most of the other population. Good. Okay. Um, so tell us, what is the United Brain Association and its mission? United Brain Association is a 501c3 nonprofit, and our purpose is to cure one with the vision of curing all. Uh, We're a crowdfunded organization where we are trying to empower every individual affected by brain disease, mental illness, through education, uh, basically through our website and information resources we have posted through support, meaning support groups that we host both on Facebook and on our webpage, and through um, Brain Stories, which is a new section of our website that just launched um, about a month ago, where we reach out or receive contact from our readers and members who want to share how they've battled through the hardships, trials, tribulations of dealing with, for example, PTSD is one that we currently have posted. Another is on Tourette syndrome. Uh, two in the pipeline are on autism and another on OCD. Mm-hmm. In addition to which, we use crowdsourcing via our website to raise funding for research. Currently, we have four projects that we are uh, supporting at NYU Langone for alcoholism, at uh, John Hopkins, uh, two projects, one in Parkinson's. Uh, it's actually uh, causality effects uh, of specific regions of the brain. And in anorexia, where we have supported the research of Dr. Angela Garda, who actually has, through Johns Hopkins, a number of halfway houses, for a better lack of a better word, whereby patients are relearned the whole process of socializing and eating and using food as an energy source as opposed to a a weapon. And uh, also we're funding uh, PTSD research at Yale University. And we're also doing another depression related study at, at Johns Hopkins. So through the monies that we're raising, we're funding these projects currently with an outlook to the future of investing more monies into Tourette's uh, with a grad student that we're supporting at the University of Connecticut, who's going to work forward to his PhD, uh, hopefully at Rutgers. Uh, and uh, PTSD is, a, is our next big target, where one of our board members is a lieutenant colonel at uh, teaching at West Point. And he has links to the Veterans Administration, and we hope to open up a strong conduit to help share research that's being conducted at numerous facilities across the country to try to unify their purpose, to make sure that we don't have overlap and and wasted efforts and resources. So we are basically a public awareness tool with the intent of raising funds to support research. So tell us um, about the history of the association. Do you have a personal, the personal story that connected you to this association? Yes, we do. As a matter of fact, it starts all the way back in the early 1990s with John Bolton, who's our founder. 
John, uh, John made quite a, quite a splash in the home audio industry in the 1980s and 90s. He ended up selling the company that he, uh, he developed, Bolton Audio, and he took his money and he put it in the bank. And he realized in the early 1990s that there was a, an opportunity for him to help with some of the issues that he had overcome, specifically uh, John is a member of AA. And although that's typically not a shared um, badge of honor, John was a mem- is a member of AA, and he started out of his own uh, funding uh, a program called AA for Troops, where he would have various um, readers produce CDs that were sent to troops out in Desert Storm when they needed to have a drink instead of trying to find a meeting which is impossible under combat conditions, they would have a CD and an audio Mm -hmm. and someone to relate to that could help talk them through the crisis they were undergoing. And John kept this going, funded it on his own, uh, and he was supporting uh, other philanthropic research. He donated before United Brain started to to research at uh, Johns Hopkins. About five years ago, his wife, Prudy, had a stroke, Mm -hmm. and the strokes left her partially debilitated, and it moved John, and it moved John to the point where he took vast resources and started to support brain research. He wanted to learn all about the issues associated with his wife, Prudy's stroke. He wanted to see who was researching strokes. He wanted to see where the hot ticket items were being researched in brain related issues. Fortunately, he uh, had, had made contacts at Johns Hopkins, uh, specifically Roland Griffiths, who currently is doing research on psilocybin and its impact on depression. Roland mentored John along the way of things he should look at in terms of supporting research. And that steered him towards supporting research at Johns Hopkins and other areas. Uh, We talked about uh, Parkinson's and also anorexia. So John then decided in 2018 that he would put all his eggs in one basket and he started the American Brain Society. That's matriculated into the United Brain Association. That was primarily driven by marketing research, realizing that we need to uh, garner donations from our followers, we needed to appeal to a broader spectrum of people impacted with brain and mental health issues. We've arrived today at United Brain Association. Our website is stable. We have four social media platforms and we're, uh, we're in the neighborhood of 50,000 users a month and growing. So I hear that the United Brain Association is a funding of a branch of brain related kind of uh, projects. Yes. correct. Can you talk to me a little bit about the PTSD? Uh, explain that to us, what it's all about and uh, its role in the United Brain Association's role. Sure. With that. Uh, mm-hmm. Currently we're supporting uh, research at uh, Yale university. Uh, once again, John Bolton on his own reached out to some of the leading universities in research, Yale being one and the program, uh, related to PTSD is a ketamine based study uh, where they're looking at, and, and once you get to ketamine as a treatment for PTSD, things are going pretty, pretty poorly for that individual in, impacted. Uh, they're looking at different dosages, different uh, methodologies and associated uh, guidance and counseling through the use of PTSD as a vehicle to guide people through their, uh, anxieties mm-hmm. um, and to obtain a stable outcome. Uh, they're really not uh, not being used so much as to rewire the brain, but there are other programs that are going to be uh, focusing on the psychedelic and psychological aspects of PTSD and the neural networks, neural connections that PTSD is, uh, has broken or repaved. And that's where I'm touching upon some of the work by Roland Griffiths. Uh, He's currently uh, endowed with a $17 million grant to work on psilocybin and its impacts on depression. And you'll find that there are a lot of comorbidities in these, in a lot of the mental health and and, and brain related issues. Uh, So the future for PTSD research is unlimited. 
-hmm. One of the things we're trying to do now is establish a a working relationship, and this is very ambitious on our part, uh, with the VA, as they, of Mm. course, have the largest single group of PTSD-impacted clientele in the United States. Um, We're still ironing out responsibilities and how we can in turn affect and impact and assist the VA. uh, And we're in the infant stages of doing that. So I guess people don't realize the depression and how that is a part of the, uh, the brain, you know, in terms of its uh, impact and, and now the rise with the pan global pandemic uh, Uh, with uh, COVID-19 and how that depression is even more compounded with what's happening uh, uh, socially, um, physiologically with the brain on every aspect. And, and we're uh, just beginning to understand the, the yeah. brain blood barrier and the virus transmission and, and long haul impacts. It's, um, it's going to be a big one. It's, it's going to be very tough. We're just barely starting to understand what's going on. We, uh, we've posted a number of uh, research articles that have, um, come to our attention uh, on both our Facebook as well as website blogs. And uh, this is unfortunately going to be something that's going to have lingering effects. Mm. And we're, we're keeping, you know, we're small, we're very dynamic. We can, we can reallocate our focus and, uh, and we can uh, promote different aspects of brain related, mental health related uh, issues. And uh, COVID-19 is a big blob on our radar at this moment. Yes. So that's PTSD, depression. Uh, Also, you address Parkinson's, eating disorders, alcoholism. Mm -hmm. So talk to me about those other Parkinson's, eating disorders, and alcoholism as well. as. Well, the Parkinson's study is my favorite. I'm an electrical engineer and uh, find that the electrical aspects of the brain are uh, very similar to networks I work with. And uh, Dr. Greg Pontone at Johns Hopkins has been doing functional MRI studies to determine what areas of the brain are initially impacted uh, with the onset of Parkinson's and looking for ways in which these areas in neural networks can be repaired. Our funding didn't really get his project completely funded. It gave him the resources to do background research so that he could apply for National Institute of Health funding on a large, much larger scope of work. Parkinson's has had impact both in uh, my wife's family as well as uh, neighbors and and other relations I've worked with over the course of 40 years. And it's a, it's a real disease and it's, and its effects are, uh, are ravaging. And so it's, it's really, uh, it's, it's a project that I'm trying to raise as much awareness of, via my contribution to UBA uh, to further fund the work that uh, Dr. Pontone's doing at, uh, at Hopkins. And in the same breath, Hopkins also has Dr. Angela Garda, who's the uh, leader in the anorexia and eating disorders program. And uh, she's making amazing strides in terms of rehabilitating people from the ground up. Uh, people aren't anorexic because they want to be it's because food and the intake of food is seen as a bad thing because of their self-developed social stigmas that they've come into and so the program that that she's working on is is basically uh rehabilitation uh they study the causal effects they get into the chemistry of it all but ultimately at the end of the day their work is to rehabilitate those suffering from anorexia to uh, re-educate them on how to take care of themselves and, and maintain their diet and, and uh, body weight. So it's a real interesting project. The work on depression at, at Hopkins, uh, John had gotten involved with Roland Griffiths in the early stages of his psilocybin research. And uh, psilocybin is the active hallucinogen uh, contained in mushrooms. And under extremely tightly controlled conditions with extremely regulated applications of psilocybin, they've been able to rewire, in lack of a better word, the patient's outlook on themselves and their 
interaction with their environment. Um, we were invited to attend a ground rounds uh, presentation by the head of the department at Hopkins and the psychiatry department. And uh, they actually interviewed a patient who'd gone through the treatment and the patient had so many uplifting comments about the experience yet 60 minutes uh, aired in um, a 20 minute documentary on the whole project. And they had people that were uh, horrified by the experience, you know, the, the hallucinogenic eight hour experience uh, to some was extremely difficult to endure yet others turned their lives around. Um, it just gets into some of the studies and some of the treatments that haven't been investigated yet and the fact that they're out there. And we try to stay apprised of what these treatments are. And as we are able to fund them, we try to fund them. And alcoholism awareness as well, right? Yes. Alcoholism is really great. Uh, that's that's at uh, Michael Bogenschutz. Dr. Bogenschutz at NYU Langone is, is uh, doing work. Um, the project is moving. Uh, I'm trying to, th- I, I don't have any milestones in front of me on exactly where they stand in their research, but uh, it has, you know, tying in depression, alcoholism, and also psilocybin as a treatment for it. So it's, it's looking into a wide variety of uh, approaches and treatments. So United Brain Association, it sounds like you guys are just doing Big, big things. How about on a micro scale? What are some community outreach um, things that you guys do? Well, COVID's really put a wrench in that. But what we decided to do was approach some of the local little leagues and sponsor 12-year-old boys and girls teams in both the town of Newburgh and the village of Washingtonville. These kids are in sixth grade. We also had a a senior at Washingtonville High School last year, she's graduated now, who was set to go do presentations on anti-vaping campaigns. The idea, uh, the thought being that a peer out or at least a senior versus sixth graders would have a relatability aspect. The supporting of the Little League teams meant that these same sixth graders were wearing shirts on the back that said United Brain Association. So that we get to that that viral impact that we start to get a name within the community as being socially active, socially aware. And we elected to go at a program toward our youth as opposed to uh, a higher level program like alcoholism or Parkinson's or PTSD. Uh, COVID came along. Um, We got a lot of shirts printed up. (laughs) We have four little league teams that didn't get much ball game, you know, many games in, but uh, we got our name out and we're going to proceed and and pursue the same path this year. Uh, So we are trying to approach, once again, we have to reinitiate the program with the local schools. But what we're trying to do is, uh, is reach out and, and, and get the attention of the, of the local uh, children in school districts. Okay. So um, how do you guys all raise funds? And you guys are a nonprofit organization, right? Well, we rate, yes, we are. We're a 501c3. Um, We are raising funds via our website uh, by relatability. We share stories and circumstances and have resources and programs, uh, outreach groups, uh, specifically Facebook support groups that are relatable to the people who visit our website. We feel that we're able to offer them information, compassion, empathy, and we give them the opportunity to donate to support this this relationship. So, you know, you mentioned your website. Yes. What? How, how can we find the website? Uh, our website is uh, www.unitedbrainassociation.org. You're listening to Your Family's Health on the Voice of NASA Community College, 90.3 WHPC. My name is Dr. Janine Cookerard, along with NASA Community College student Gina Peter. And today we are learning all about the brain with our guest, Jay Maddie, the Vice President and Executive Director of the United Brain Association. So, 
Jay, we were ended off talking a little bit about your website. Mm -hmm. Can you share with us some of the amazing things that people can find on your website? Well, yes, I can. (laughs) We uh, were set up. We have an about page that uh, basically describes our mission, purpose, vision, who we are, uh, what it is that we do, and our board members, uh, in addition to which we post our uh, 990 tax returns uh, for everyone's inspection. The next page over is our brain research, our, our, um, our brain resources, rather. And here we have um, building up to 80. We're in the process of, up, of loading additional uh, research and, and uh, resources as we, as we speak right now. Uh, but we t- typically we have about 65 uh, brain diseases that we have listed, uh, ranging from anorexia, uh, through various addictions, to CTE, to cerebral palsy, through meningitis, stroke, uh, onto Tourette's. Um, so it's a, it's a broad spectrum. Uh, we anticipate expanding this to about 120. Uh, we add new content uh, in terms of brain resources on a monthly basis. Uh, we also have a new page called brain stories and this is probably our most exciting development currently on the site we have posted two stories of two individuals one uh, overcoming PTSD and the other living with Tourette syndrome and they're really uplifting articles Um, these two gentlemen have shared with us uh, from their diagnosis through treatments through outlooks through what they do on a daily basis to overcome Uh, hurdles. And we have two more stories that we're working on now on OCD um, and on autism. And these stories should be uploaded within the next two weeks. And we're currently harvesting new uh, contacts through outreach on Facebook. Uh, We have a lot of users that contact us and tell us about uh, different ordeals they've been through, and we reach out to them, and we develop the brain stories, and we post them on our site. Uh, In addition, we have a page for donations, and that's typically how we we pay our bills. Uh, We're very fortunate to have John Bolton writing checks to us on a monthly basis that basically supports our overhead. In addition to which, though, we are outreaching to the community and raising funds on a crowdsource basis. Uh, We started a program. uh, Basically, we refer to it in-house as major donations, where we will be in the next month or two approaching large donors and foundations and uh, apprising them of what we do and uh, seeking funding from them as well. The intent being that we will fund projects related to the funds that we raise. The idea being that if we're garnering all our monies into PTSD, that project will be supported first. Monies given to us for Parkinson's will go into our Parkinson's research. Uh, so it's basically done by bins, if you will. And um, that's, that's primarily the, uh, the layout of our page. So what is the one thing you want to leave our audience with when it comes to the United Brain Association? Uh, We are a a positive outlook and provide anyone interested in mental illness or brain diseases with information, resources, uh, current studies, trends, and research in the area. And we also have support groups to help you deal with any afflictions that you may have. So tell me, can you share a personal um, story of inspiration that you may have heard about someone, a testimonial about um, someone who has been impacted by this um, association? Sure. As a matter of fact, he's uh, one of our new board members. Uh, He's a, He's a master's student at the University of Connecticut. His name is Colin Krasenyak. And Colin reached out to us as he was doing additional research. He's, he's affected by Tourette syndrome. And uh, he was diagnosed at the age 12. And uh, he's learned to overcome on a daily basis the hardships. He drives. He plays soccer. Uh, he's working on his master's uh, with the outlook of working on his postdoctorate degree. 
And he reached out to us because he was searching the internet for additional information on Tourette's syndrome. Uh, he came across our resource database and said that he would love to share with us what he has learned. And uh, we interviewed Colin and probably the single most impressive person I've talked to in this decade. I'm being facetious. He's a really great kid. And, and uh, he's now one of our board members. Mm. So Colin is, uh, was uh, given a one credit class uh, award for his joining our board. And part of his master's program is to keep his advisor apprised of what he's doing with United Brain and what projects he's working on. And for that, he earned a credit hour toward his master's. Um, Colin's not the only one that we've we've had come on board that has really illuminated both us and them, but he's one that comes to mind as you ask the question. So that's awesome that you guys are doing a great work. I'm just looking at your website and mm-hmm. it is um, very impactful. And I'm just just reading this part. It says, by funding innovative brain research, we also aim to cure brain disease once and for all. Our vision is to see a world without brain disease. Yes. And that is uh, very impactful. And certainly that is uh, your mission. And it sounds like you guys are impacting people um, in various aspects of brain illness and disease. Mm-hmm. So we want to thank you for being here, Jay Maddie, uh, the vice president and executive director of United Brain Association. And we hope you stay safe and continue to do the great work. And thank you for being our guest today. Thank you very much. Jay, can you tell us how we can get in contact with this organization? Sure. You can either directly contact us through our website, which is www.unitedbrainassociation.org, or you can email directly uh, simply at info at unitedbrainassociation.org. Either way, uh, we monitor the uh, email traffic and site traffic on an hourly basis, and we'll return your uh, request for information as soon as we get it. Facebook is another one of the platforms that we use in addition to Instagram uh, and uh, LinkedIn, as well as Twitter. You can also reach out to us via those platforms. What is the Twitter handle and the Uh, Instagram handle? At United Brain ASSN. This is Dr. Janine Cookerard from the nursing department here at NASA Community College, along with student Gina Peter. And we want to thank you for listening to this week's edition of your family's health. We'd like to get your feedback on your family's health. Send your comments by emailing them to whpc at ncc.edu. Podcasts of today's show are available on iTunes, Android Podcasts, and Spreaker. This program was produced at the studios of Nassau Community College in cooperation with the nursing department. Join us next week for another edition of Your Family's Health on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC.